Okay, so last time, what were we doing up in here? We had said, in the grand scheme of things, uh, oops, escape, escape, okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay, again, remembering where we came from, we got two surfaces, we want to find a centroid, we did that, we want to get mass properties, we did that, and last time we kind of attacked the middle portion, which was rotate to global coordinate system, right? So last week we had a little bit of a long s session about how to do this. So we had said the biggest problem is is when we write down these two axes here, the, uh, the whatever we were calling them, E1 and E2, how do we take two surfaces and extract out of them E1 and E2, right? And what we had landed on was trying to figure out from from what's inside of each one of these, if you can recall, just put this like this. We had said, let's grab the curves out and then let's sort them, right? And then let's grab the longest one. The longest one is hopefully, um, if I take his endpoints, he'll be pointing in the right direction, right? Um, so, and that had gotten us to something that works. Now that is obvious, it's going to be buggy. I guarantee you there will be problems, but for the sake of argument, uh, that's a valid algorithm for what you've been given. It may not solve all the surfaces in the world, but it solves this one, and assuming that you have everything coming in the same way, data-wise, so if the data is the same, where the longest side, the longest line in that surface, one of those surfaces, because remember we're feeding in two surfaces here, so the longest line in those two surfaces, if it's kind of oriented in the right way, right being along what we would call the E2 direction, then it will work, right? So let's pick up where we left off, right? Let's pick up where we left off. So uh, we had said, let's do a little screenshot action here, just so we're ready to go. And we had said step number one, get E1 and E2, right? So that's this guy and this guy. I would say we have that, considering we can show it from Grasshopper. So the second step was take those guys down here and use them to orient us in the right direction, right? So I'm going to jump down here, and let's just screw up our geometry um, slightly, just so it's not correct to start with. So there's our guy. If you have Gumball on in, uh, in uh, Grasshopper, or in in, uh, in Rhino, you can just do this, All right? And yeah. again, it, it moves with you now. So again, this guy's just there to visualize. I'm a kind of guy who likes to stay nice and clean, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to cluster these, but I'm going to move. I'm going to say this geometry. I'm going to copy him, just to keep it clean, right? Just so we can see what goes in. What goes in? A geometry and a B-rep. Again, I'll hide this. So what goes in? Geometry and a point. And what comes out? You can't see vectors directly, but what you can do is do this, right? So what really what we want is E1 and E2 coming out. So the output is going to be E1 and E2. And there you go. What did we say on paper? On paper, we had said we want to throw in a point and some geometry. And we want out E1 and E2. So we've we've gotten our goal, and this is what it looks like in Grasshopper. So we do this, right? And we say, okay, and we're going to put a little copy-paste here. Step four. Step four. Rotate to GCS. Makes sense. Just a little bit of cleaning up, right? We should have done this last time. Uh, because, you know, you can waste a lot of time with this. So the final step here is we know that, we said this geometry here needs cannot be this picture right here. It needs to be different, right? So we need to get that thing oriented correctly. We said to do that, we needed one of these uh, axes. So if we want to take this guy, again, he's coming in. Let's go back to our paper. Remember, look, look at what I got here. What do we say this second part takes in as an input? He says A, 
goes in and B goes in. So we need E1 and E2 or and A. Let's go shopping for data. Shopping for data means this geometry here actually is going to come up here. And the question is, is what are we going to do? We're going to rotate, right? So the question I would have is, let's just show E1 for now. Because I don't think we need E1 and E2, right? Do you think we, yeah. So in this situation, if I told you to use E1, and I happen to know that E1 is looking like that, what's the command? Again, we know what's coming out the back end here, a piece of rotated geometry, right? Disconnect that. So in between here is the final step. And we know that on paper we had said that's a rotate. So what's the first thing we do when we kind of know a plan and we want to see how Grasshopper can help us? Or Dynamo or any software. Does anybody here know how to do this? What do we have? We have a vector and we have some geometry which we'd like to rotate using that vector. How can we do it? So we want, we have this vector right now, right here. What's his final state that we want him to be in? Doesn't really matter, right? But what is that in, in global terms? What defines what I just did? You're, you're, what, what defines why you just took your hand and moved it horizontally across the screen? Why are we doing that? It's not horizontal lines. Nope. Mathematically, why are we? What, what is all this leading up to? Why is this important from an engineering perspective? X. X. It's the global x-axis. In fact, this came all the way. This was <coughs> back in the very first conversation. It was the recognition that, remember this down here, uh, this guy, this guy. We already have dictated that the global coordinate system is relevant. Why is the global coordinate system relevant? for bonus points. Again, this is a lateral thinking exercise, right? That Even the script is lateral. It goes from left to right. So you have to be able to think of beginning and end and everything that comes in between. People who are good at lateral thinking are really good engineers. Why is it that this needs to be oriented? To the world coordinate system? Thinking about what comes after? Why would you do, if it was AutoCAD, why would we have to do, or would we orient it like this? Jane, you're saying yes. Why? Bingo, right? We don't have something that integrates for us along some random axis. We have something that integrates for us in the global coordinate system, just like we showed last week, right? So, in other words, we are missing in all of this this one we can see visually with our eyes, that this guy right here is the one that we want to assign to the global x-axis, right? So that's got to be involved in this definition somehow, some way as well. Uh, so what do we do now? We have one vector, which is where we're current ori currently oriented. We have another vector, which is where we want to be oriented, and we know that we want to do something called rotate. What's the thing we do now? simple. We've done this a trillion times. This is where you've done all this work. You've led up to this. What do you do now if you want uh, to help? And, uh, if, if I told you I got your x-axis here, E1 here, just to show it visually. Hell, let's just do uh, both of these. Right? In the wrong direction, but whatever. Mathematically, ooh, fun. Um, mathematically, what are we doing here? Angle, yeah. And then what are we doing with that angle? Rotating it, just like you do in CAD, right? So how do we rotate in Grasshopper? One link. What's if, if I told you I want you to rotate something, what do you do? Well, if I told you I gave you the degree, 
What, what do we, how do we find anything in Grasshopper? Yes. Or, first thing, easier, even easier, rotate. Right? Google search inside of Grasshopper. We know it's called rotate. We know it's a CAD command, right? It's not anything like uh, very special. Right? So we type in rotate, and there's a few things that come up. So what do we do now? We just click one randomly and hope that everything works out? No, we, we hover over it and we say, what do we want to do? Right? So we know, let's just try and focus in on what we know we have. We have two vectors, right? You're saying angle, right? So if we could find something that has an angle in it as an input, then all we'd have to do is figure out the angle, and then we'd be good, right? Again, lateral thinking. You've recognized that it's an angle. We don't have an angle. But can we not understand that we could make an angle pretty easily out of these? We can see an angle on the screen, right? So it shouldn't be hard for us to get an angle, right? So let's start first. Rotate. Rotate object in plane. Ooh, that sounds good. Rotate a vector around an axis. Do we want to rotate a vector? Not really. Rotate axis. Rotate object up around an axis. Rotate, it's 3D, rotate an object about a center point and an axis vector. Good law. Let's check this one out. Rotate object in plane. We already said last week we're going to do XY plane. <coughs> so let's see here. Rotate object in plane. Base geometry. What geometry do we want to rotate? That's a pretty easy one, right? That geometry. Angle. Again, I'm going to move this over here. Angle, we said. This is in radians. We don't have an angle, right? So what can we do? What did you say? What did you say? Yeah, we said type in angle. And what do we have? What do we want to go into this? Yeah, and look at the emojis. How beautiful is that? There's a couple things that say angle, but that one right there, the emoji gives it away. And it says, compute the angle between two vectors. Booyah. So what does it want? First vector, x. B, second vector, e1. What's he say? Technical issues, don't worry. It's because I was screwing around with it. So that's uh, in radians 2.17. Who's a whiz with radians? Does that sound right? <laughs> How do you think we change the degrees? Degrees. Wow, if I just type in degrees, it comes out. You guys see a pattern here? 155. Now, you guys are smart people. Is that a 155 degree angle that you want to rotate? What's going on here? Why is it saying 155 when it's clearly, clearly that's a 30 degree angle? Uh huh. So it's 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 taking the bigger of 30 and and 155 to make 180, right? So that's a bit of a problem. Let's see if it matters. Again, this guy, what's he asking for? Rotation angle and radians. So we don't want to really use that. Whoa. Where, where's my geometry? Did everybody expect to see, what did everybody expect to see at this point? Did we expect to see some sort of our geometry rotated? So he's there. We've rotated it. Remember, if you click your middle mouse wheel and you click this, our guy, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But look at where he is. He's all the way over in Timbuktu. Let's go back here. Again, original geometry. <coughs> zoom to him. Again, zoom to this guy. Timbuktu. What's going on here? Does anybody have any ideas? Bingo, bango. Good job. So there, I'm all the way out here. So let's, let's look at this. The plane, optional plane for 2D angle is the big deal. Now we said before that we were going to use XY plane, right? We're going to keep everything constrained to there. But this is obviously, so this is where we're rotating it about right now. 
our geometries up here. So is it any surprise that when we rotate him 155 degrees, where does he end up? Let me just deep rep. It'll make it easier to see. Is it any surprise that we end up at this green dot here when we rotate about that guy starting from this guy? So it's working. I can see a 155 degree angle. And even I can see something that we could definitely do our calculations on now, but it's in the wrong place. So what do we do? What's, in, what's missing? What's missing from our first principles here? Rotate, we're implying it, and it's not shown. We're implying that the rotate happens about this guy also has to make his way down here as well. Because rotate is not, that component doesn't know where he's rotating about. He's rotating about something that's not directly um, logical for us, right? Well, that's easy, because we already said before, we have that point, right? So we're going to go shopping for data again. Bring him forward. And now, put him, he's not at zero, zero anymore, right? If I take him out, watch, he, he goes away. He's now at the origin. Now, if I put him here, he's where our original geometry is, should be. Yes, he is, right? And now, if I put this guy in there, oops. So what's the problem now? What is the problem? That's a good question. Let us see. All right, so where's our original geometry? Zoom in. He's still down here. So we've placed our point up here. Guys, just FYI, the plane will always kind of default to the global axes when you create one like that. You can make them look bigger by going like maybe 10 here. Maybe in this case we do 100. So meant to be rotating about that plane, this geometry, which I can't really see when I do it that way. So you can see the geometry. Oh, sorry. I put it in the wrong one. I put it into angle. Okay. But we had said, obviously that wasn't going to work, right? It just, it's not the right angle, actually, that we're flipping about, right? So what can we do? We just give up, say, oh, you know what, I thought they said that this, uh, I thought Medio said that Grasshopper, oh, gave it away. There you go. Sorry, I gave away the answer. Uh, it was because I put that in here, right? So actually, let's look. What happened when I put that in there? So it's obviously, it's changing the basis of where it, it takes that angle from, right? It's doing something funky, and it, it doesn't make sense for us to put that in, right? So it was my error that caused that. Now, who would say that this thing's ready to go on and be integrated? Then let's put it over there. And let's clean up our script a bit here. So delete that. That doesn't do anything for us. And rotate the global coordinate system. That's actually step five. I kind of lumped two things together. So rotate global coordinate system. This one is actually determine global coordinate system. Determine local coordinate system, rather. That's all this was. And if you look at it, it's the biggest part of the script was massaging, was massaging our data to get out the local coordinate system. After that, this was child's play, right? Does everybody see that? And again... If we look now, and I'm a guy who, let's say, uh, take a screenshot of this. 
So we're calculating right now new school. So the new way of doing things, automatically, we get 4.48. Now this guy right here, we can't get it using Rhino. Sort of tried and true methods to have him work. So let's put him like this and say area moments. And 4.48, how you doing? And did you notice, this didn't even change, right? Why? Because it doesn't matter. It literally is automatically always going to, behind the scenes, make sure that that's coming up. Pretty cool, huh? So already part of your workflow, if you guys are doing this often, is now taken care of. At least on a basic level, that's your, that's what you want. Congratulations, we're halfway through the sixth session, and we have finally gotten to all the way back at the beginning, something that automates your workflow as you described it to me, right? Is anybody surprised at some of the stuff, how long it took, slash how many intermediate steps there were? It's a lot more complicated than it is just to say it in English, right? So remember, this was version one. Oh, we find the centroid. Easy, right? I just type in centroid. Easy. Oh, I rotate. Oh, I do AutoCAD mass properties. But to do something that's this simple in Grasshopper, requires you to pull out things like parallel axis theorem. Oh my God, when I said that the first time, you guys nearly fell out of your chairs, right? Oh my God, I have to think about how to find the local coordinate system. Again, I think that's a very important thing. If you look at the script, I know some of it I've clustered. Uh, where did I cluster? Well, I clustered this part right here, right? But if we just look at that, that's actually fairly simple. The majority of this script is faffing around with finding the local coordinate system. And that should teach you guys something about the data you've been given is completely disjoint from the stuff that is you care about for engineering. So for instance, I've given you, someone's given you this piece of geometry. That thing has nothing to do, at least from the data that is there. It, unless you give it logic, it will have no local axes. So unless the, the key behind being a computational engineer is, is being able to look at these things and say, well, how, what rules are there that sniff out the logic that matter to me as an engineer? In this case, it was a few geometrical operations, right? Equally, something like this one, the parallel axis theorem, is using engineering theory just instead of using, you know, a lot of times we only use engineering theory, the math, via other pieces of software, not CAD, and via Excel. And if anything has to do with geometry, that's done in CAD. So this is why Grasshopper and Dynamo are so powerful, because they have the ability for you to mix both of those together. Excel does not do good with geometry, nor does CAD do very good with just straight up numbers and, and text, right? Grasshopper can help you combine both of those. And that's what we've done in this one short script, okay? Okay, so before we move on, any questions? Any questions? No one? I know it's not a good thing to ask. <laughs> Does anybody have questions? Because no one ever wants to be the guy. But honestly, if you have questions, that's the only way we're going to go forward with this. So here's a question. What? Is this ready to work on your project? Are we ready to rock and roll and, you know... What's going to happen on your project? This is where you guys need to tell me. Is this a useful script yet? Why is it not a useful script? We've taken, what do you mean? It's taken six hours times however many people. If this isn't a useful script, God only knows this computational engineering is poppycock. Why isn't it useful? Okay, but now we have this. So from now, well, let's say the six hours are in the past. Six times five, 30 man hours. So what now? So if, I'm, if, I, if you, I tell you, hey, let's have a race of who can get Okay, let's have a race. Who can win this race? We have all these guys to calculate for. Who's going to be the guy who gets should be paid more because he produces more? Who's going to win now? The guy who's using this script, probably. Right? What could...
be something that causes the guy who's using the script to still look stupid because the guy who's not using the script and is is doing something else is not winning. Well, it could be that this script doesn't work all the time, right? We've just done all of this work and all of a sudden I would come in here and I'd say, how about this? The guy who's using the script, if I do this to him, Oops, oops. What happens now if that's the guy? And you know, just to make it, just so one of you guys doesn't get smart and say, oh, I'll just join it again. That's, that's your guy now. There's some sort of weep hole there or something. Huh? What happens now? So you say, that, that guy... Me and you, we're having a race. I go boom. I go boom. I say set multiple geometries and I get out 1.032, right? And the guy over here, he'd have to come like this probably, right? And then you'd have to type mass properties. He's already wasted tons of time by having to type mass properties or area moments, sorry. And we look and it's 9.0. One six because I didn't create it quite right, right? But this guy, he's winning, right? So you say, oh, the other guy. So he's behind right now, right? Now the other guy comes here. Okay, I'm so far ahead. I can come over here. Medio said this stuff's going to work all the time because computational engineering is amazing. Holy crap. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, that number seems a lot different than what we remember from before. Uh, so this guy's over here, slow, slow pokey guy in, in analog mode. He's doing this. He's saying area moments. He's already got the command in there, so he's speeding up. And it's, uh-oh, uh-oh, not only did my number over here change, but this guy's getting IX of 7.48e to the 5, and I'm not even close to that. Why is that? Let's take a gander. So, first of all, centroids, this automatically, we see something different than what we were dealing with before. Automatically, we're like, whoa, what's going on here? Right, because before, again, because we started with first principles, we started with the idea of we'd have two points, and then that two points would create a line. So that must mean that our centroid of this has to be wrong. So let's see. Whoa, yowza, right? We have four, cent four centroids. That's not good, right? So we've broken the script, but it should come out as no surprise because our script is geared up towards two surfaces, full stop. So this, was a good, this is a good first stab at it. But it's not extremely useful because you will beat someone over and over and over should you be the guy who's using two surfaces at a time that represent a mullion or a transom. And it's in the XY plane, right? So all of these things, there's a bunch of ifs here, right? So let's let's just make sure that before we move on, uh, script, oh, sorry, scribble, assumptions, one, two surfaces per mullion cross section. You don't do that, you're screwed. Two, cross section is in X, Y plane. Anything else that this thing inherently implies? I, don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm sure we'll think of more later. Right, so this thing right now, those are those assumptions actually are kind of what make it a little bit not so good. But usually it's okay to start. This is the way you start. You start by something that's working but only under certain circumstances. And then you start to chip away at these assumptions, right? These assumptions which are holding you back commercially, right? Because what we'd really like to do would be amazing is if we had a script that basically we grabbed everything here and we right-clicked once and then all of a sudden... Not only does it calculate all those things, right? It sends it over to our calculations and it colors these guys based on the moments and all that other stuff, right? So we have a lot more work to do other than calculating IX and IY. So this guy's got to work a lot better for it to be worth our time. The first thing we can do is start chipping away at some of these assumptions. And I think the first easy one is to get it down to you have to give me x surfaces right it can't just be two it can be any amount of surfaces right does that make sense 
So I'm going to save this lesson six as we have it right now. We're going to save as got just a few minutes left here. Lesson six. Now we're going to go into version two. So version two, the only difference is, is we're going to start heading down the route of what we want is X or N surfaces. So it could be this one will work and this one will work. That will automatically put us in a good situation, right? Because if me and uh, Sunhak are, are, are playing the game of who can get there first, I, if I can do all three of these just by going ch -ch 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 like that, it'll work. But right now he's winning because the second I get to this one, I'm back to old school, right? The next level would be obviously grabbing all of them, right? But we go one step at a time. So guys, what can we do Again, we're, getting, we're gaining some momentum here, but we have to go back all the way to the beginning and change our mind about some of the stuff that we've done here, right? So some, remember version two here. This was version two of our idea for the script. So we've really fleshed it out since week two, right? That was predicated on the fact that we would take one and two. Now what I'm saying is those go away. This is gonna be N surfaces, right? So the first step was find the centroid, right? And that was predicated on getting two points out. Now we get n points. So how do we go? Now the question is, is how do we go from n points, which I'll just draw them like that, to one point, where the one point is here? Any ideas? How do we go from n points to one point. What are these endpoints? What do they represent? The centroids of n surfaces, right? So, okay, we already know we can get the centroids of n surfaces. So, what happens right here in the middle has to be up to us. So, what can we do? Before we said, let's create two points, the, uh, two points equals a line. The midpoint of that line should be roughly the centroid. What can we do now? I'll give you a hint. Remember, a lot of times, remember, your world at this point is very small. It's points. I, I'm not giving you anything else yet. With this, in our minds, that's all that matters right now. At this stage of the game, right here in our lives, all that matters is I have N points. What can you do with points? I don't know. There's a lot of things you can do with points. But what can you do with what's inside of points? Remember, things have things inside of them. So what is a point? It has x, which is a number, y, which is a number, z, which is a number, right? So we could play with mathematical games. So let's, let's think from both ends of the spectrum here. If we were to think of a mathematical rule, what could we do? If we were to think of geometrical rule, what would we do? Just with words, don't worry about grasshopper. How could you go from n points to a point that is a function of all of those? We know that this is a function of n points, and it spits out one. So whatever operator we use must be taking lots of things and boiling down into one. Ideas. Oh, no, it's not impossible for shizzle. For shizzle, it's not impossible. Huh? That's the, that's the one right there, right? That's the word. If we are going to pick an English word to describe what we want to do, we'd say average. And if there's some sort of function that averages points, we could use that. So what do we do? When we, when we think that that function is called average, do you, do you know how that function would work, Jane? If I had to ask you what that function does, what do you think it does? Okay, so that's a mathematical approach. So now we have two plans. One is find a function in Grasshopper that's called average. Two is start playing math games like you just described, right? You described a weighted average effectively. It's good. It's really good. Let's go over here. Let's do our famous Google search. Average. Boom. Solve the, arithmetic, the arithmetic average for a set of items doesn't say what those items are. So it could be numbers or it could be points. So we have nothing to lose by throwing this in there. 
boom, Jane for the win, right? Let's see if it worked if we do uh, area centroid where that ends up. Jane, close but no cigar, I think. But, right, so it gives us a value, but it's not giving us the value that this guy's giving us. And it looks wrong, too. So what's so that must not be working correctly. It can't be working correctly. Any other ideas? Remember, we've taken it as we have end points that are those points, but that's because we've used the area component. What if we tried Jane's method with other points, right? So maybe Jane's method, let's see here. What if we, remember we said before the deconstruct B rep? So now we have more points. Maybe it's just an issue of, of the way we're doing it right now is too crude. So if I put in more points, does it get better? Oop, we see a dotted line. What do we see? What do we do when we see a dotted line at this stage of our careers? Right click and flatten. Oop, getting closer, I'd say. If you guys kind of remember what the other one looked like. Closing in, right? So maybe it's just Jane is correct. We can use this, but maybe we just need more refinement in our points, right? So what so what is it that we need to do for this to work? I'll tell you right now. If you're working on this theory, you're on a good track, right? So it's an issue of the average function will work if you give it more and more points. So what do we need right now? Well, we just did that with the deep rep, right? So we said we have geometry, and if we can get down to a bunch of points from that. So before we were saying, can we go from points to one point? Now we're saying, can we go from geometry to lots of points to one point? Because Jane has already figured it out how we go from many points to one point. It's just the issue of we're playing with here the wrong points. So what could we do? We could go to surface and we could look up here for things that kind of help us get more points from a set of geometry. Right? So I'm looking in here. Give a grid of UV points on a surface. Let's see what this bad boy does. doing something. What's U and V? The number of times to divide. So let's just kind of pull out a number here. Let's see what it does. How about that? Huh? How you doing? Oh, what do we do? Flatten. Kill it. Kill it quick. Still not 100% on, right? Still not 100% on, but definitely a lot closer than we were. And you can see. So if I put in a th maybe a thousand, what's going to be the problem the more I p pump this number up? So look at 22 milliseconds there as I do this. Whoa! Nearly a second now. And we're still not, a little bit surprised, we're still not 100% on, right? Because this is a, isn't necessarily doing what we want, right? So it's kind of okay, but it's I don't think this is going to be feasible. And this is the kind of thing you need to be able to do, is sort of not be afraid of looking for solutions in Grasshopper, just sort of quickly looking at this and saying, this won't work. Again, the main idea here is right, Jane, is let's get something that's an average. But I don't think actually this average function, we don't know what's happening inside of it. Uh... Whoa, and there's a bunch of nulls, too. So that could be affecting us as well. Uh, so that could be something to look out for as well. So there might be problems there. What I would do, just FYI, I would deconstruct the point. Again, we said, let's get those numbers out. Because we said, Jane has a good idea. And I, then I would average the numbers just to see if it comes up with the same thing. Because I want to see... I don't know how to average a point. I know how to average numbers. So what I would hope is that this guy is just averaging the coordinates. Uh, construct point. Jesus. Construct point. So let's see where this guy ends up. And he, 
So it's obvious, let's see here, that's what he's doing because they are exactly on top of each other. Let's just make sure we got this, this area moment, uh, centroid. That looks like the right place, and that is the right place, right? Because we, we use the other algorithm, which we trust more, right? So that's the key for, I'd say, probably we're, we're up for today, is that next week we have to figure out how we can use Grasshopper to get that point, right? So everyone have a think about how you would get there and give it a crack over the next few days. Because if we can get that, automatically our script becomes... Not just a little bit more useful, a lot more useful. So the hard parts behind us, we've spent six hours trying to get to something that is just barely useful. Now, every hour that passes, we'll start to double its usefulness. And it'll keep going, it'll keep going, right? So now is not the time to stop practicing and stop coming to the sessions, because this is where we're going to start getting more and more useful. And the guy who's just laughing in the corner, who's saying, oh, I've worked 50 hours and I've actually gotten stuff done while you were putzing around with Grasshopper, He's about to be very sorry because for the rest of time you will beat him into a pulp with this script. Right? We're getting close. Everybody have some thought. I think the average function was a good idea. I actually am a bit confused as to what's going on here. I would have thought this worked. Um, so potentially it's garbage in, garbage out, but I'm going to leave it right there for now. It's on the server, the link that I sent before this, this file. So this is the file that we'll use from now on. Um, and uh, yeah. So next week we'll we'll jump in head first right here. Any questions? Hour number six gone. We'll be at Christmas time before we're where we need to be. <laughs> okay. Could you please send us uh, the script that you did last week, not today? Uh, can do.